Aloha. Welcome to American Issues Take One. I'm Tim Apicelli, your host. And today's title is Age, Taking Center Stage of the trump Biden Election. You know, for the last year or so, um, President Biden has taken it on the, on the chin uh, regarding criticisms that he appears to be too old. Um, we definitely have noticed in the last year that he's slowed down and his movements are a little more rigid. Uh, they're trying to, and when I say they, uh, the, Trump, the Trump team is trying to pin Joe Biden with the fact that he's mentally incapacitated to also perform the role of President of the United States. The issue here at hand is um, age. And the question is, is Donald Trump also getting a pass because he doesn't seem to be criticized nearly as much as President Biden is? So to discuss this topic, I have with me my, my co-host, Jay Fidel and my special esteem guest, Chuck Crumpton. Gentlemen, good morning. Hey, you know, Jay, I'm gonna go right to the heart of the question. Is pre President Biden or candidate Trump simply too old to run for office of the President of the United States? I'm really not sure about Biden. With Biden, it's, um, it's a physical thing. You know, you expect um, that he would be stiff and was not gonna run the marathon at, at his age. But with, with Trump, it's mental, uh, clearly mental. Um, and it is more than just age. I think we have enough data, enough professional opinion, enough family history uh, to make a pretty robust conclusion that Trump is incompetent right now. And he will become more incompetent in the next few years. Let's go down the um, kind of the, uh, the checklist on some of Trump's behavior on camera and off camera, on stage, off stage. Uh, you recall that uh, lately he's been talking about Hannibal Lecter. I, I don't know why he's talking about Hannibal Lecter, but he has been. Uh, he's bringing that up in his speeches on how great Hannibal Lecter is. Well, if I remember the movie Silence of the Lambs, uh, Hannibal Lecter was a, a cannibal, a murdering, a murdering cannibal. So I don't understand it. Uh, remember during the COVID briefings, Donald Trump would look over and Dr. Fauci wasn't there that particular day, but he, he suggested that uh, bleach cleaning and the introduction of UV light would be beneficial to combat COVID-19. Uh, we recall his um, bragging about uh, the fact that he passed a mental acuity test, which I don't think was much of a test. Uh, it's basically the same test they give you if you're about ready to go into a nursing home and he bragged about the fact that he could say person, woman, uh, camera, TV. That was in 2020. I don't know if he's had any tests since then. Uh, we've heard lately on the, on the stage that he's talking about uh, a boat sinking with electric battery and what's his more palatable to face is either a, a boat with electric battery that's going underwater or a, a shark 10 yards away. Um, he droned on and on about that and that seemed to come out of nowhere. Uh, we could go on the list, but I think you've heard them all, Jay. And Chuck, I think you've heard them as well. Your comments about Donald Trump's recent and even not recent um, statements of bizarreness. There's something called phonemic paraphasia. And there was an article by a Cornell expert by the name of Harry Siegel about that. He's in the psychology department at Cornell. Uh, and he's also in the psychiatry department at Cornell Medicine. And um, he, he, he believes without any question that uh, Trump uh, is showing signs, has been showing signs of phonemic paraphasia, which is what you're talking about. It's mixing up names, um, mixing up um, you know, uh, uh, phrases, um, and, and that it's signs of early dementia. Here's a guy who's an expert telling us that Trump has signs of early dementia and has had them it's not new and so um, i think that that's one huge indicator it's not just forgetfulness you know everybody you know to get into their 80s they get for forgetful um, but this is this is more this is early dementia now what is dementia uh, dementia is a is a it's a course of symptoms um but in fact dementia is just the statement of symptoms rather than the statement of the problem. Alzheimer's is the problem, and it causes dementia. There are other things too, but Alzheimer's runs in Trump's family. 
Um, his father was born in 1905. Um, by 1992, and that meant he was 77 years old at the time. I get that right? Um, check me on the math. Uh, his father had demonstrable dementia, and it was Alzheimer's. And in the years that followed, for example, at a party that was written up in the paper uh, and in medical journals that took place at Mar-a-Lago, um, his father was having trouble recognizing members of the family and didn't know exactly who Trump himself was. He associated Trump with a Cadillac. That's how he remembered who Trump was. Um, you know, the high living Cadillac person. In any event, um, Trump's father already had serious Alzheimer's by 1992. And if you do the math, uh, Trump is right there in that zone because, you know, dementia does have a, um, a, a handed down genetic uh, complement. And uh, he's probably due for dementia. Uh, and he may be suffering dementia right now in the, in the form of uh, Alzheimer's. So <clears throat> I'm very concerned that what we have here is a guy that is not competent and hasn't been competent and would become more incompetent going forward. But the most chilling thing I saw in my reading on this, are you guys sitting down, is that um, pathological lying is not just lying. Pathological lying is an extension of phonemic paraphasia. Path pathological lying is also an indicator of dementia and Alzheimer's. And I find that very interesting because we know that at least from 2017, Trump has been doing pathological lying, tens of thousands of lies. He can't distinguish. He comes up with this stuff. And it is not just... Um, an intentional um, uh, deception of people who are listening to him, although may maybe that's part of it. But, the, the, you know, the major consequence here is that he has some kind of pathology that is making him lie. And that will also only increase. And so the question, you know, the question is, A, why isn't the media hammering on this more, this distinction that we make uh, between Biden's infirmities, which are physical, uh, and Trump's mental infirmities, which are pathological and mental. Um, and as a result, you know, a lot of people in this country feel that Trump is OK. He knows what he's doing. Uh, and all these lies are, you know, either a mistake or accidental um, or they're intended for some other bizarre reason. But they're not pathological. And and I and I am worried for a number of points of view on this. It's not only that, as we say, Trump is crazy and aggressive and divisive um, and has bad judgment. It's that Trump is not competent to have good judgment. He's not competent to you know, have relations with people. He's not competent to understand foreign policy uh, or economics uh, or you know, any number of um, American policy points. He, he can't and he won't be able to. Um, this is a serious problem, and it leads us to the 25th Amendment. So, Tim, I suggest you you ask Chuck about the 25th Amendment and whether it's any comfort here. All right. Well, Jay, I will ask him that. But uh, isn't it too late to talk about the 25th Amendment when the election hasn't even occurred? Isn't now the time to ask these questions about mental acuity? Uh, why wait till an election and then try to enforce the 25th Amendment where his loyal admin, you know, department heads, not department heads, um, um, administrators are not likely to do anything about it. Well, yeah, OK, I, I totally agree with that. That's a point well taken. But the fact is that he is surrounded with um, the likes of Goebbels, you know, who are masters in, in disinformation and who protect him from the, you know, the revelation. And uh, the press is um, the press is not really covering this, and so the result is all those people in the red states believe that Trump is just fine, and that's probably going to stay the way it is between now and November. Trump says that Biden should take a mental acuity test 
prior to the debate, shouldn't they both be taking a test? Doesn't the, the American public have some right to expect that there would be leaders uh, can be pass the basic anti-psychotic, anti-sociopath, anti-dementia test before they're elected or f before they become the no the, their party's nominee? You would, you would think in any due diligence scale, mental competence would be a threshold requirement for the presidency or any leadership position. It's going to raise a lot of questions as to who does it, under what standards, stuff like that. We know it's not going to happen. Trump would never permit it unless he could handpick somebody who was already pre-concluded. But the problem's going to be that Jay raises, and, and this is why it's timely now. If you look at not only the two areas Jay's identified, but if you look at the top five or 10 symptoms of Alzheimer's, dementia, senility, whatever you want to call it, he has all of them. And they are increasing. The third one on the list, which becomes really, really dangerous, it is anger, irritability, and irrational behavior toward others. He's already threatening to destroy the lives of anybody he considers an enemy on day one of his presidency, not day two or three, day one. He's already shown that anyone who does not join his party line abjectly and obediently without reservations is going to be subject to that vindictive punishment that he will impose because he will recreate the leadership and the impetus of every government agency in his image. And if he can't, he'll simply dismantle them. He's told us that's what he's going to do. No mentally competent person would have said these things. No mentally competent person would have proposed to have either the legal authority, the moral authority, or the actual ability to be able to make these choices in place of the people. So ultimately, I think the point of your question is, if election is a choice, there is one choice for the American people that leaves the door of choice in our lives open. And there's one that closes it. That Trump has made crystal clear. If he's elected, all choice will be his choice for his reasons, which would be scary enough if he were not demented. I want to add one thing to all of that. You know, the psychological phenomenon of projection. You know, on these shows, we've been talking about projection from the beginning. How uh, And, and it's, uh, it's part of the playbook. It's the daily playbook. Um, and if he wants to deflect attention from himself um, and uh, take a, a weakness that he has and paste it on his adversary, he uses the technique of projection. I, I'm not sure he's aware you know, that he's doing this, but that's what he's doing. Uh, it's textbook. It's psych 101. <clears throat> that's one thing. So what he's doing is he knows he's weak. He knows he couldn't pass the test. He knows that this is going to come out one way or the other. <clears throat> and the, actually, for him, the sooner he has this debate, the better. Because in three or four months, he may be in much more difficult circumstances. The other thing I wanted to mention is your reference to um, Hannibal Lecter. That is Trump's reference to Hannibal Lecter. This is a movie about a guy who was out of his mind insane. Okay? Um, and it just so happens that the, the actor in that was, what's his name? Anthony Hopkins. Anthony Hopkins. His name was Anthony Hopkins. And Hopkins also made a movie within the last couple of years called, I think, The Father. And The Father was somebody with Alzheimer's. And it goes to your point, Chuck, about, you know, this aggressive quality. And we all know people who are in institutions right now. Uh, who go for what they call elopements and walk out 
nobody can find them or who beat up their um, their colleagues, uh, their co-patients uh, in these uh, senior facilities loaded with aggression. So if you want an explanation of the aggression that we see, which is open-ended aggression, it's, it's pervasive with him. The explanation, in my view, is that it's just another part of Alzheimer's. It's just another part of his pathology. And as president, he would be able to express that on a daily basis. You know, I find it completely immoral, completely unacceptable that the people around him know what's going on with him. They talk to him every day. They sit with him in strategies and conspiracies. They know, and they are willing not to say anything. They are willing to expose the country to this murderous, unrestrained, aggressive okay. person. I, I got to interject a question here. Okay, so we know that Biden has been the target of a lot of criticism, and actually it's it's made an impact on his favorability ratings. Uh, Donald Trump now is starting to see the spotlight on himself. And to your point, Jay, uh, his acolytes are trying to deflect that spotlight. S Stephen Miller, uh, one of Trump's henchmen, uh, said that Trump has, and I quote, elite stamina, which is to say he's going to be able to stand at the podium for 90 minutes without any issues at all. Uh, does that somehow denote mental acuity or mental uh, defects? Is the fact that you could stand at a podium for 90 minutes? Is this once again one of Trump's great distractions or attempt to distract from the issue? And the issue is his mental acuity. Your thoughts? Yes. The answer is yes. I mean, he's pathological. And he doesn't have to dig down very deep to have the strength to stand at the podium for 90 minutes. Um, I think you have to listen to what he says uh, at the podium for 90 minutes. And it's wandering. It's rage. It's unhinged. He's been, we've been calling him unhinged since 2017. And he is unhinged. He's more unhinged now. And he gets up and make these wandering, have a phrenic remarks that don't even connect, that do not bear any relationship to reality. He is telling us that he's a sick man. Yeah. Okay. Well, where, where's the traffic cop in all this? Where's the traffic cop to say, uh, Biden does the seem to have some, some issues. Uh, are they just merely physical? I mean, there's a lot of people that say, because if they've had parents, and I've had one, where some of the stuff looks like it's um, pre-Parkinson's symptoms. Uh, where's the traffic cop to say, hey, wait a minute, both candidates need to go under a battery of examinations. That's not happening. Why isn't that happening? Either guest, either you, Chuck, or, or Jay, take that one on. Well, I consider that the toughest question you've asked already. So I'm going to I'm going to concede to Chuck on that one. There are three possible sources. It should be the independent media. That's not going to happen. We don't have an independent media. We have some quasi independent media participants, The Guardian, The Atlantic, uh, move on. But we have nothing resembling an independent media. So it's not going to come from there, right? CNN is not. Washington Post is not. New York Times is not. The second possible source is opposing leadership, which would be either the Democratic Party nationally or state or others or individual Democratic leaders. Interestingly, we are now less than six months before the election, and none of them have stepped forward to even raise or address that truth, much less expose it. The likelihood that it will come from Schiff for Pelosi or any of those people is diminishing daily. Is this a quid pro quo agreement between the two camps? Doesn't need to be. Hey, there, there is no agreement and there probably will be no agreement between the two camps because their sole tenet is to maintain disagreement and opposition. And if by doing that, they neutralize each other's attention to the other side's mental deficiencies of their candidate, then we pay for that. 
Source number three. <laughs> Source number three is somewhere in the great public. Is there an institution that is capable of assembling, digesting, evaluating, and presenting that information objectively, reliably? There is one and only one institution in our society that is capable of that, which did it in the 1960s and is not showing any signs of life to do that again. And that is our higher education institutions. We are not going to see it from Harvard, Columbia, Stanford, any of those places. That's disappointing. We're not seeing it from Michigan, Wisconsin, UCLA, Berkeley. That's even more disappointing because those are public universities. We are not seeing higher education do the homework, Let me ask, share it, or present it. Okay, so let me ask you this. Where are our experts as far as mental health? I know that um, early on in the Trump administration, there was a kind of a consortium of mental health experts that uh, got together. Um, they're not supposed to analyze or diagnose things by observation. They should actually be in front of the patient. But there were some uh, that signed, a, I think they all wrote a book together about uh, what they see as issues for Donald Trump. Uh, the question is, where are our mental health experts our, uh, and our, our medical doctors to address both candidates? Doesn't the public have the right to say, we really want this flushed out, and if the media is not going to do it, and the education system is not capable of doing it, where are the options? Where is the concern of the American public, be it a Democrat, be it a Republican, be it an independent, be it a Green Party? Where are their concerns being addressed before the six months comes up? And might I remind everyone that the President of the United States does have the capability of launching nuclear war codes and nuclear strikes. So if you look, Tim, it's a really good question. The leading psychological and psychiatric organizations, institutions, and groups, they are cowering in intimidation and fear. Trump and his cult have verbally with threats of physical violent attack on them on their families on their homes they're scared for good reason okay so you're describing germany 1934 perfectly you're talking about the the threat of intimidation or physical violence to silence your opposition and and, and opponents yep uh, jay go to you i'm sorry I, I certainly agree that um, people are worried about um, vengeance uh, if they speak against him. Uh, and in fact, uh, to that point, uh, the Stanford Internet Observatory, which was a fact-checking organization of, of, of great intellectual power and part of Stanford, closed a few days ago. Why did it close? It's because... Uh, Trump's acolytes uh, made threats on the people involved um, and sued Stanford um, for, I guess, I guess defamation. Um, but the reality is this was a very valuable institution and it's gone. And there may not be that many of the same ilk um, around the country. And it, it kind of explains why we're not seeing so much fact-checking anymore. I sure hope they have robust fact-checking at the um, debate coming soon. But the other thing I wanted to mention is, yes, Trump intimidates them. Uh, and when he says, I'm going to take vengeance on my enemies, he's including anybody who would criticize his mental condition. But there's another element, and it's cultural. I, I, and I believe this firmly. You know, it was tasteless for Trump to make fun of a handicapped reporter years ago. Remember that iconic photo where he imitated a handicapped reporter? And, and the American, you know, this, despite uh, what some Trumpers may think, the American, um, the American norm is that you don't do that. Uh, you are sympathetic uh, to people who are handicapped. You are sympathetic to people who are sick and have conditions and so forth. And I think 
you know, there are a lot of people around who, including medical people, who would like to come out on this, but they're they're a little concerned that if they come out and attack Trump on it, not only will they be subject to his promises of vengeance, but they will look bad uh, for the American ethic. They will look bad at attacking somebody uh, for uh, lack of mental acuity. You, you know, for a lot of people, you just don't do that. You don't um, attack people who are elderly. You don't attack people who have lost it. Um, you 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 sympathize with them, and 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 I'm not saying everybody feels this way. I mean, I, I don't particularly feel this way. Um, a monster is a monster, um, but but I think there are people, including people in the media, who feel that it's tacky to do that, and they're going to hold back on doing that. And that's one explanation about why they don't do that. OK, uh, it looks like we've run out of time, so I'm going to go for last thoughts on this topic. Uh, Chuck, let's go to you. Have to circle back to the central question. If we want to have choice in the most important aspects of our lives. Our work, our income, our housing, our families, our health care, our education, our environment, our climate all of it, there is only one possible choice that will leave those doors open, even a crack. The other one, they're not only slammed shut, but we will find ourselves on the outside excluded and precluded unless we join the cult. Wow, thank you, Chuck. Uh, but if you want to know what I really think, I'll let you know yeah. later. <laughs> yeah, appreciate that. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's a little sobering thought. Uh, Jay, your last thoughts, you get the last word. It's not over. You know, we say there are only four or five months left before the election. Uh, in, in the life of a declining Alzheimer's patient, that could be a very long time. It was a long time in the Hopkins movie that I mentioned. And in my experience, um, having some contact with Alzheimer's patients who have been diagnosed or who are, should be diagnosed, um, it's a short time. And I think we are going to see increasing signs of dementia, of Alzheimer's going forward. And I think the press will have to capitalize. The press is waiting for a clear signal. And I think they will get clear signals as Trump steps all over himself because he, he has that paraphasia thing, uh, because his lying is so pathological, um, because his statements are so outrageous, and because he can't remember who's around him and where he is. And they're going to have to acknowledge that. They're going to have to write it up. Um, and I think over the next four or five months, as, as justice would have it, his condition will worsen. And if the press picks up on that, and if people pick up on that, there's a fair chance that Chuck will have what he wants. That is uh, an electorate that is aware of this problem and is really worried about what he would do in office. And the fact, we didn't, we didn't cover it today, but and the fact the 25th Amendment is of no help at all. Correct. Well, we have five short months. And it's my hope that the press does start picking up on it because uh, there's a lot at stake. And if we don't pick up on it, we'll get the government that we deserve. I'd like to thank my co-host, Jay Fidel, and my special esteemed guest, Chuck Crumpton. I'm Tim Apicello, host for American Issues Take One. Won't you join us next week? And until then, aloha.